cannot intellectualize yourself out of the human desire to be loved and that's why i think this entire like decenter men get hobbies instead of dating it's it's all bs and it's coming from people who are too embarrassed to admit how lonely they are out of some like shame they feel for perpetual loneliness telling people that a healthy happy relationship is not something to want feels crazy because if you are watching this right now and you are in a happy healthy relationship you know damn well that it's better than being single about this a lot as i see this increase in content that like crucifies women for staying in these like less than ideal relationships with guys who just suck i don't think that should come in exchange of shaming people for falling in love mark them well people these are the new pick me's feminists are not exiling women because they fell in love and there's not some plot against women who want to be in relationships and you don't feel shame and guilt because somebody exiled you and said that you weren't worthy as a woman you feel that because you betrayed yourself this is the kind of women who do not come around when they have a man oh they have a man they're man they're man they're man and when they fall out with him then they want to come back and absorb all the you know friendship and feminism welcome everybody back to the boudoir i am your host aisha jones if you guys liked episode four when i was telling y'all to get some self-respect and stop dating losers you are going to love this video but we're gonna actually dive deeper and talk more about this whole decenter men phenomenon because i can sit here and tell you all of my opinions on that which i definitely will in this video but i wanted to actually like have more of a conversation about it because there's actually believe it or not people on the other side they're basically saying decenter men is a whole load of junk and we're all lying to ourselves and we're all actually miserable and crying ourselves to sleep. So this whole conversation has been going on for a very long time and it most recently got re-sparked on TikTok. A creator by the name of Alexia had originally posted a video saying basically that decenter men is a fallacy it's not possible and anybody any woman who is telling other women to decenter men is trying to intellectualize themselves out of wanting romantic partnership the people that are spearheading this movement are a bunch of like crazy old lonely hags was basically the gist of her first video so alexia had made that initial video and when i had seen it on my for you page i thought that it was extremely intellectually dishonest i mean they're all very fair points to bring up and we're gonna dive deep soon you know and obviously no personal direct hate towards this person like we're allowed to disagree i see their videos on my for you page sometimes and sometimes i disagree with them sometimes i don't and this is one of the situations where i don't necessarily agree with them and it's fine like there's no beef so okay. she had made that video i want to say maybe like a week or two ago cecilia or regina had posted a video stitching a lady named jordan who was basically saying why are women made to feel like them falling in love with the wrong person is some big crime and like they should be shunned and exiled from womanhood because they wanted to stay in a relationship with a, with a less than stellar person cecilia comes in and she's like listen as you know somebody who's older and seasoned in this conversation quite frankly we are tired of hearing you guys complain about problems that you clearly know are not good for you because you're saying well i know my my boyfriend's not perfect so you know you're you're staying in situations where you clearly know they're bad for you and then not only that you're going to your friends and you're using up their emotional labor because you don't want to do the 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 work of leaving the relationship so you bring it all on your friends and then you get mad when they tell you that this person is not the one for you and then you abandon them and then when your boyfriend breaks up with you and breaks your heart you come in right around back to where you started back to your friends and expecting everybody to be all kumbaya so it was a lot <laughs> this whole conversation you know i've been seeing a lot of great commentary from other creators too who jump on and like when things like this happen in social media i know it's so easy to like get your feelings personally involved and like want to fight back because i did i made a stitch I, I mean i didn't make a stitch to that video but i made a video about alexa's video basically saying like you guys don't like why are, stop trying to infiltrate the movement if you don't even know what we're talking about like that is not the point of decenter men whatsoever you know i like it when things like this pop up because it gives us an opportunity to all talk to one another which is what social media is about we're supposed to have conversation we're supposed to like get into it and like really get into the meat and potatoes and that's exactly what we're doing today hi <laughs> where do we start we have to start from the beginning so let's talk about the origins of decentering men and how this whole thing came about so this is something that obviously feminism has been talking about since the movement's inception right like they've been saying that we need to 
find other ways to go about living our best life that don't involve a man and like obviously back then there were so many more things stacked against them like they couldn't even get a bank account up until 1974 i think it was which was like when your mom was born like some like your parents were alive and like well during that time also from what i've seen online is that this is a conversation that lesbians have been talking about far beyond far before social media too so this is also something that they have been saying but in terms of like the modern day social media punch pop culture coining of the term i the earliest article i can find was from 2020 from the medium and it's funny that it was written in 2020 because this is when we all had time to actually sit back and relax for the first time in our lives and like actually think about all of the decisions that led us to this point point. and i will link that article down below too just in case you guys want to read it but of course, this whole decenter men thing comes from just years and decades and decades and centuries, really, of all of the trauma that women have gone through in terms of like marriage and kids and stuff and maintaining a home. All of that trauma has finally caught up to us Gen Z millennial women. And we're like, listen, you know, this might have slid back in the day, you know, grandma could have slaved over the stove while the man was out working eight hours talk to his wife sideways asking where's my meatloaf at and blowing up for nothing and then the wife would just have to sit there and smile and act like nothing's wrong even though she probably wanted to you know so back then they had to do certain things because that was literally their only way to financial freedom they had to get married because they could not do anything on their own legally it's more than just oh why would they put up with that like they literally had to they had no other choice and like yes you had a few outliers those aunts that you have that are unmarried have no children those were the women that were seen as the outcasts back then because they saw through the bullshit they were like why am i gonna do all this <laughs> when we're getting treated like crap so yeah all those aunties that you have or pe just unmarried women they probably saw through the game and they were like uh my single life is way better than all of this so whatever but it's finally gotten to a point where we modern women see what the game really is and we see that these men don't want partners they want maids they want sex workers they want five-star michelin chefs okay they don't want partnership with us not all not all men not all men but enough for this to be a movement that's taking place internationally because then we also have the 4b movement that's going on in korea where they're basically saying no to heterosexual sex marriage child rearing and uh something else but they're basically saying get somebody else to do it too because we see how y'all treat us we see all of this uh all of these crimes that these men are doing to us and all of this like brutal brutal stuff that we should not have to put up with so since this is how you want to act this is how we're going to act we're not we're not contributing to this world until y'all get it together so the women who get it the women who understand have all made this switch in one way or another regardless of the language you speak whether you're for b d center blah 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 whatever you doing you're doing it okay but some people have a problem with that this movement has seen a ton of pushback and i believe it because it directly affects the status quo decentering men women decentering men is unheard of like we are literally groomed and primed to believe that men are the end-all be-all and if you don't get married you're a bitter old loser hag who's gonna die alone with several cats and once you turn 25 you're now old and decrepit and you have nothing to offer this world that's what we've been taught we've been taught that we're only supposed to desire motherhood and marriage and so now that we're like uh who said that like according to who we have a, a brain for our own we don't have to you know do whatever society says now they're scared now they're getting scared the men are saying oh the 4b movement it's never gonna work it's never gonna work you're just gonna get raped more you're just gonna get killed more and it's like if that is even a concern in and of itself why do you think we're doing this like is that a logical response to somebody not wanting to have sex with you is to do something terrible and unspeakable to them like that's not that doesn't make sense so that's why we are withholding because you people are unreasonable so yes this whole movement is getting some pushback and even not just from men from other women as we've seen in these tiktoks and i found that the creators that are in favor of this whole decenter men movement have either taken a step back from dating and decided to work on themselves and become celibate even or they're just flat out tired of men not picking up the slack 
in their relationships. And also, it's not just single women that are a part of this decenter men movement. There's plenty of people that are in healthy, loving marriages or just relationships who have raised their standards and have said that, you know, I'm just going to work on myself and do me. And then when my healthy counterpart can match me or even become better, that's what I'm looking for. And then that's what they found. So what does it even mean to decenter men? As far as I'm concerned, to decenter men is to simply center yourself. So look, this is the sun, right? Happy solar eclipse. It's the eighth. Here's the sun. Now, some of you, I'm not naming any names, but some of you think that this, the sun, is supposed to be a man and marriage and motherhood. But we'll just talk about men for now, right? This is your center of your your universe. And here you are, a little planet, your Venus, or your Neptune, whoever you want to be. And you think you revolve around this, right? When actuality, and which is something I always say, it's on my Instagram profile. You are the star of your own universe. You are the sun of your own universe. So here's you. You are the sun. And then here's the other nine planets that are rotating. Look, you got Mercury. That's your family. You got the Earth. That's your friends or whatever. You know, whatever. You got your work. You got your pets. You got whatever else. Like this is, and then your relationship. This is how it should look. You are the center. And then these things revolve around you. Instead of making dating and the desire to be liked by a man and, you know, prioritizing what they like and what they want in a woman, instead of making that your priority, you make yourself your priority. That is what decentering men is. It is rejecting the belief that a woman's only role on this earth is to be some sort of birth incubator, a, a wife, chef, maid, barefoot and pregnant. There's more to life than that. And now let's make this part clear because this is where it seems to have the disconnect. OK, this is where we start losing people for some reason. OK, that doesn't mean you're not allowed to want to be a wife, to want to be a girlfriend, to want to be a mother. Nobody is saying that. But we're saying is you have more to offer outside of those roles the same way your job and your career is not all you have you have more to offer than that and if you don't think that that is a problem that is why we're having this conversation because people seem to think that being in a relationship is the end all be all but what what do you do outside of your relationship do you read do you hang out with friends do you have a hobby do you go to classes like can you speak another language have you traveled recently it's not just about a relationship but at the same time nobody is judging you or punishing you for wanting to be in a relationship that is not what we're saying you can have those things but it doesn't have to be your role and guess what Decentering men is not just for single women, it is for people in relationships, especially for women in relationships. Because some of you do this like weird disappearing act where you get in a relationship and then like everything else you used to like just suddenly doesn't matter anymore and it's all about this one person. So it's not just for the singles, it's for the 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 takens as well. It's for the mothers who think that all they have is motherhood. You know, you are a whole person outside of that. Like now for myself specifically, you can make decenter men whatever you need it to be. You can rephrase it centering myself. You can call it whatever you want. If you need to take a year or two off of from dating because you just need to focus on yourself or you just have a lot going on and you want to work on you, you're allowed to do that. If decentering men for you looks like having a whole roster and just roster dating and rotating until you find the one, that is also fine too. It is what you are comfortable with. So this is not like some weird cult where it's like, we all must do the same thing. And if you're not with us, you're against us. <laughs> like it's not, <laughs> I'm like so hype, happy, happy, I'm so hyper today. And I'm like so passionate about this topic. And yeah, I'm kind of on one right now, but- <gasps> it's like warm outside i'm happy i just got done looking at the the solar eclipse i went on this like solar eclipse cruise so i'm like my energy is all the way up here and i'm like so happy today but back to the topic like i said whatever you need to do if you need to have the roster because you're somebody who like me would put all my laser focused energy on this one person because i'm such a lover girl i'm such a lover girl like i love so hard so it's just you and nobody else if you're like that you can have a roster instead of putting all of your eggs into one loser basket put an egg here, an egg there, an egg there. And if this egg's bothering you, you cut that one off and you add a new one to the roster. Whatever you got to do, it's up to you. This is not a cult. 
So now let's talk about the arguments that I've seen against decentering men because there's been quite a, a few people and you know this is a conversation like we're not here to like have sides I don't want this to be a thing where it's like well it's us against them it's us against the pick me's it's the girls girls against whatever like I don't want it to be that I want us to actually hear one another but at the same time some of y'all need to be on this side of things this side being the decenter men thing so let's whatever. just go into these arguments so the main thing I see people saying is that, well, it's human nature to desire to be in a relationship. You can't intellectualize your way out of wanting romantic love. And as I said before, the movement is not saying you're not allowed to have romantic love and you must only be in platonic relationships. In fact, I found that for myself, once I started decentering men, I actually had a more healthy and positive outlook on dating because when I was like more of a pick me, I just spent all of my energy consumed into like dating and texting back and what am I going to reply and like just things that are not conducive to my time, honestly. And not just that, it's one sided because I was not getting that energy in return and no healthy relationship should be one sided. So like I found for me personally being on this side of things that I have a more positive outlook on relationships because I'm like, look, Listen, I've been single I was okay when I was single. I'm going to be okay when I'm single. Now, if I meet the perfect person who checks all the boxes and is everything I need, that is also fine. That's in fact what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my healthy masculine counterpart who's gonna come on in and be my little honey sweetie boo boo. But until then, I'm good without it. And I'm not gonna sit here and like, please like me, please somebody give me attention, please anybody. Like I'm not gonna do that because I don't have to because I know that my life is perfectly fine the way it is. Like I'm good, I'm not any less than because I don't have a partner and I'm not any better because I do have a partner. Wanting companionship is normal. And like I said, if you're somebody who's very romantic, a lover girl, you have those types of qualities to you, nobody is punishing you, nobody is saying you're a bad person, you're weird for wanting this. It's just, can we have a little bit of a more common sense and like, re can we relax a little bit? Like, that's all we're saying. You, when you, when you decenter men, you can actually have a more positive outlook on dating because you're not over here saying men are trash, men ain't shit, men are la, 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 la. Even though I kind of ju did just do that in the beginning of the video, because it is, there's truth to that, okay? There is truth to that. I'm not saying not, I am not saying not to say men are not men are trash. What am I even talking about? I don't even know. And also, I choose to believe that good men exist because I actually see healthy relationships around me. Like I've seen what a healthy relationship looks like. I know that good men with their head on their shoulders and not in their booty hole exist. And I don't have this like scarcity mindset of, oh, I got to just hold on to the whatever men I can get and whatever looks my way. Because when I was a pick me, any sort of male attention, I was eating it and gobbling it all up as if I had never gotten it before. And honestly, I'm a late bloomer. So I kind of never really was looked at like that. And so when I got into college and I finally started getting like the male attention, I just took it and ran with it. But it's like just because somebody's showing you attention doesn't mean a that you have to like them back b that they're going to be good for you and c that they have pure intention and now that i'm on this side of things i feel more at peace because i don't have this like my time is running out i have nothing else to offer like my life is in shambles because i don't have somebody i don't have that mindset because i'm so like obsessed with being single like i like to just stay i love coming home to nobody sometimes i would say 98 percent of the time i'm happy that i'm coming home by myself and then two percent of the time i'm like well i kind of do wish i had somebody to come home to you know so yeah when i was in my pick me era and i was like men are trash men are trash fuck men but here i am looking for male validation so what is what how does that make sense how how is it fuck men but here i am seeking said male validation so it's just such an interesting dichotomy with the pick me because a lot of them have that mentality as a former pick me a lot of them have that mentality but will sit here and fiend for male attention so i don't get it and because i didn't believe good men existed i kind of would fall for those type of men the men that fall in line with those characteristics because when you speak those types of words out there the universe is going to be like oh bet here you go you think all men are trash 
<laughs> here you go. Remember that you are allowed to want companionship. That is not the problem. You are allowed to want friendship. You're allowed to want companionship. Be careful because people can smell desperation from a mile away. If you're getting to a point in desperation in your dating journey, you need to take a step back and ask yourself, why do I want this so badly? Like, what is the big prize that I'm gonna get once I'm in this relationship? And I'm sorry to say this, but manipulators, liars, losers, hobo, hobo, bo sexuals, people that uh, try to mooch off you and live off you and now you can't let them go because they're like your son now. Um, all of those men go for the desperate, naive, I just want love. Oh, woe is me. I just want to be loved. They go for those types of people. Not always, but most of the time, that's their prime target. So even if you do have that desperate energy and you really want to be loved, at least keep it to yourself. Like, try to act like you don't have it. Like, seriously, though. Like, I'm sorry. Remember Risa Tisa? She was like, I just want to be in love. I just want it to be my turn. And now I'm not saying like, haha, that's what you get. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like, even she said herself, like I was, I was so focused on like the idea and like the shiny, pretty parts of being in a relationship that I wasn't even like, like being more curious about this person and why, you know, he just had all of these perfect lies lined up. So it's like, just be careful. Nobody's saying you can't want a relationship. You absolutely should want a relationship, but you should pray on what you want that person to look like. You should write down a list of things you're not going to accept and things you are going to accept, non-negotiables, script out your dream, like what a day in your life and your dream relationship would look like. Like put some intentional time. Don't just be out here walking all la-di-da, wide-eyed, tumbleweed, acting like you don't know right from left, left from right. And like have your head on straight and pay attention. The second argument that I see against these center men is women shouldn't be punished for falling in love. Hmm. What was my crime? All I did was sit here and fall in love. Of course you don't deserve that, y'all. Like, of course not. Of course, just because, you know, you were dealing with an ain't shit dude, a loserly fella, that doesn't mean you deserve the treatment that you're getting. Of course not. Like, just because you didn't see the red flags doesn't mean it's your fault. Like, it's not like you deserve to have this happen to you. It just did. It is so important to identify the toxic and honestly everything doesn't have to be like this toxic abusive relationship like I feel like on the internet we always get so like black or white if it's not butterflies and rainbows it's the most tumultuous crazy thing you've ever experienced in your life like sometimes people are just less than stellar people and just not and just kind of mediocre and maybe it's just down to compatibility or whatever it is important to identify when when you leave a relationship all of the things you did not like about that person that they did were they too nonchalant with you did they take too long to reply to messages were they constantly going out every night like whatever your situation is each time you leave a relationship like collect that data in your head and like update it for your next relationship like if you now know i don't like when people raise their voice at me you either make that clear up front or if the next person you're with ever gets loud with you, you make sure you explain, hey, please don't speak to me that way. I don't I don't appreciate that. And now you have the choice to either make sure they actually follow what you said and listen to your boundary, or if they mess up your boundary again, then you can peace out. But what are we sticking around for? If you already know that you don't like what you don't like, why do you have to stick out stick around and like see what's gonna happen next? That's what I don't understand. Like you already know this makes you feel icky. You've had the conversation, hopefully. And you know that's not what you like. So don't try to force it. Just move on. But make sure you are constantly updating your standards and asking yourself what you do like and what you don't like. And sometimes you do just have to go through things in order to like really understand and figure out what you don't like. That was me. My my past was that I had a very hard time speaking up for myself and and I can confidently say that now because I know I'm in a, a place in my life where that's not the case anymore. And I've healed through that and I've learned how to speak up for myself. That is called taking accountability. Well, yes, you didn't deserve to be ghosted. You didn't deserve to, you didn't deserve to be cheated on. You didn't deserve X, Y, and Z, but it still happened. All you can do is accept the role you played in the relationship is, and move on. Like maybe you waited too long to leave. Maybe your friends were trying to tell you, hey, this person is not the one for you. And you either told them, shut up, you jealous hoe, 
or you just did did what you wanted to do anyway whatever you did you just had now have to take accountability for it don't sit in your ego and act like oh it's all their fault him him men are trash it's all them it's important in order to grow as a person and in order to be a mature person the easy way out is to sit here and point the fingers at everybody and act like you know you're this perfect little angel who had absolutely no part in this two-person relationship two people not just one the person who plays victim and act like you there was nothing they could have done to make the situation better sometimes there really isn't but sometimes you have to just be an adult enough to say yeah that was a red flag and i ignored it or i was really i i was really naive and i didn't know this but now i do and move on it doesn't have to be oh i'm such a stupid idiot why didn't i see this coming like no the point is you didn't see it coming so instead of focusing on what you didn't do just do better for the future today don't focus on what happened and who did what and who's trash and posting these sad quotes on instagram just move on be better for the future and now you know you don't like this type of behavior in relationships so you make that abundantly clear for the next one whenever you guys have like the what are you looking for conversation but don't infantilize yourself and don't act like woe is me i'm just this helpless little victim who just my only crime was falling in love and brush his hair out of face like you're you're an adult like you are not some you are a sentient being like you're alive you're here you're making conscious choices some choices are not good but you still made them so just own up to it and move on we all make mistakes but at the end of the day we are all responsible for the consequences of those mistakes you spilled some juice on the floor Oh man, now you have to take like a minute out of your day to clean it up. Minor inconvenience. Did you maybe want to, you know, did it set you back in your timeline just slightly? Yeah, maybe. Minor inconvenience. Uh Uh-oh, you're driving and you were supposed to take that exit, not this one. Now you just added an extra seven minutes to your journey. Eh, maybe I might be a little late to my doctor's appointment, but minor inconvenience. Nobody really got hurt, you know? Oh, you had a yippee-ki-yay time with the dude from the club who was just oh so fine and oopsie now you're pregnant and he abandoned you and the child and you are now left with this consequence of your mistake extreme inconvenience mistake of course mistake yeah mistake accident even but it is still now your responsibility to deal with the consequences unfortunately you know So that is the whole point. No matter how big or small the mistake is, you are still responsible for the aftermath of it, which is why we get so adamant of like, please, please, like if you can help it, pay attention in the beginning of relationships. Like the beginning of relationships is like the perfect time for people to be con men and act like they're this perfect thing. Like if something is too good to be true, it just might. Again, I want to reiterate, just because you went through something doesn't mean you deserved it. But in order to do better for the future, you have to take that very mature step, even though it hurts. Sometimes you have to take that very mature step and say, well, wait a minute. What is it about these people that I'm so attracted to? Or why are they so attracted to me? Like, what is it about me that I'm like, ooh, inconsistency, infidelity? Like, what is it about that that I don't know how to like walk away when something's bothering me but I mean it's hard you know but pick your hard is your hard being in a relationship with with someone who does not give a single solitary fuck about you or asking yourself the hard questions I would go with this hard personally that's just me because at least this hard sets me up for the future better and And you know what some people's choices and some people's mistakes land them in prison for life okay this is not extra this is not dramatic this is real life sometimes people can't control their emotions so much that they find themselves behind bars this stuff gets serious out here treat your life seriously and take yourself seriously you have so much to live for it's other people out here that may not have a lot to live for you don't need to be around people like that because they will tear you down and honestly we equipped women with this information because if we've seen time and time again that these people are mediocre leaders they are extremely emotional they're not competent and they ain't shit as we all like to say why would you put your well-being your happiness your heart into the hands of these people that are incompetent wouldn't you rather equip yourself with the knowledge than sit here trying to make somebody that's never going to see and never going to care that they hurt you because i'm sorry if somebody is intentionally going out of their way to disrespect you and harm you they clearly do not care about you So why are you going to sit here and 
go in your notes app and type and delete and type and delete and you did all this stuff to me and then you're gonna send it to your group chat to have them proofread it just for him to not care because we've already established if somebody can treat you like this they don't care about you why what do you want like okay like what what now okay there slap on the wrist Ooh, you hurt my feelings now what convince yourself that you have enough strength to move on and do better and honestly it's more about like teaching women self-preservation like we are often socialized to just oh go with the flow just make sure everybody's okay like don't rock the boat don't speak up like no make a ruckus speak up if you don't like something remove yourself from the situation we gotta move smarter we gotta stop putting our safety our life our everything in their hands and just focus on ourselves and what make us and what makes us happy sometimes shit just happens and like life deals you a terrible hand and some people are just like um, Olympic gold medalist con artists and really can just pull the, the wool over your eyes. All right. And the last argument I see against decentering men is you can never truly decenter men in a male centered world. And for me and my philosophy is like the world already sees us as lesser than. And honestly, if you are a black woman, if you are, if you're a minority, you already have extra advantage, disadvantages stacked up against you. So that's another thing to consider intersectionality. <laughs> so like they already see us as lesser than they already see us as their maids and their birthing centers and their incubators. And that is not true for my life. That is not my only sole purpose. I may desire those things. I may aspire to have those things. I may work towards that, but that's not all I am. Like I have more to offer than the fact that I can birth a child. While that's amazing in and of itself, let's not downplay motherhood. That's the thing, like we shouldn't downplay motherhood. That's a huge honor and we can't just give that to just anybody, but like we're so much more than that. And the person that we're gonna share that intimate journey with, who we're gonna literally be, we're literally gonna be spread out like this on the, the hospital table, um, giving birth in front of and like going through all of those contractions, like, that is special and you can't just give that to anybody and sometimes you don't always see things but if you can help it and you have people around you that love you and are trying to help you and don't want to see you hurt if they're telling you that this is not a good idea listen to them step out of your ego for a second and if you're fighting so hard to prove that nope this person is for me he's the perfect person blah 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 you have to ask yourself why you have to convince your convince yourself so hard and everyone else like of course, you're going to be a little bit more biased because you you're with the person, but other people who are standing from the sidelines, well, yes, they don't see everything. They can see in a more level headed way that there's clear and obvious red flags that are happening here. You know, you can aspire to be a mother. You can aspire to be a, a wife, but you are far more than that. Like that is the whole purpose of this movement is to teach women that there's more to life than just kids and stuff, you know? If your parents keep asking you, when are you gonna have kids? When are you gonna have kids? I want you to ask them, do you have their college fund set up adjusted for inflation? Because you're doing a whole lot of asking and pestering and like, you don't even know. What if I couldn't have kids? What if I don't want to have kids? Does that make me lesser then? Would you love me less if I don't give you grandkids? Like the real tea is I feel like a lot of parents just want grandkids so that they can have a second chance at parenthood. But like you had your chance. Sorry. Um, and I think it's very rude when parents like try to pester and force them like when are you gonna get married you're 30 you're 29 like I just think sometimes they do it out of love but other times it's like it's actually very rude and distasteful to do that in my opinion it's not fair to do like it definitely takes a whole lot of reprogramming to get on this side of things and like seriously we all have some internalized misogyny in all of us because that's the world in which we were socialized like we all we know is like women are objects women are this women you know we're seeing all of these rights that are being taken away from us we're being shown that we're not people don't care about us and we might carry some of that with us unbeknowingly so it's always important to unpack those things and like even with racism homophobia like we all have to do the work to like make sure we're doing good and it takes a a lot of like conscious effort to really like step out of that mindset and just and like minimize the role and like the importance of romantic relationships in your life like and understanding that there's more to life than just having a partner it's a matter of using all all of that energy that you're putting out to outside forces and putting it to yourself and giving yourself the self-love and appreciation that you deserve and to not abandon your values for the sake of partnership 
Here are my arguments for why you should consider decentering men because I just feel like it's just so much better on the side of things, but you be the judge of that. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life, okay? So your overall self-esteem is just gonna be through the roof because gone are the days of jumping through hoops, trying to salvage relationships that are dead end and are going nowhere fast. You will know when it's time to walk away and you will have enough self-respect and enough self-love to know when it's time to cut ties. You're gonna be so crystal clear of what your boundaries are and what your standards and expectations are in a partner that when it's not aligning with what you want and it's happening a little too much, like, yeah, people make mistakes sometimes and you can figure it out if you want to, but if it's a pattern, you have the pattern recognition skills to know, oh, I've been down this road before. I'm not doing it again. See you later. Try it with somebody else. Like, that's what it's all about. Your self-esteem, your emotional maturity, your emotional intelligence. You'll know yourself so much better. And I feel like platonic and familial relationships can be just as fulfilling, if not more fulfilling than romantic partnership. We're, we're told to like put all your eggs in this one basket and put the man on the pedestal and you got to cook for him and be the perfect wife. And here's 10 ways to be the most feminine, uh, blah, blah, blah person that a man is going to chase. Like we are putting so much energy in to that and when do at what point do we get to know who we are and what we actually like about ourselves and what we don't like just because something is like this is how you attract a man like you don't have to necessarily do that and just because the things you like to do align with like whatever the male gaze is that doesn't mean you're trying to appeal to that you know it's just all about doing what you like and when you're only hyper focused on finding a partner and wanting a man and keeping a man, you may not pour into the other people that are already in your life, such as your family, your friends. And by fa- by sacrificing that piece of yourself and giving your all to this one person who's probably not giving you that back in return, it hurts and it can hurt the people around you. Because when you need your friends, when you need that those people in your life and you need that support, you may not always hear back because it's like, what kind of energy were you giving them? Were you always there for them or were they always there for you? Like it can't be one-sided. It has to be mutual and reciprocal. That part is specifically for the girlies who either ghost their friends whenever they get a boyfriend or they dump all of their problems onto this person and then you're expecting your friend to carry all of this emotional weight because think about it. Why else are you going to them if you're not coming for advice? Because are you really gonna break up with your boyfriend or do you just want to vent? Like, you want us to be like, oh my God, girl, he ain't ish, da 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 da, ranting and raving and like watching that and having somebody feel that with you makes you feel good. So please listen to the friends that are telling you the truth. Don't listen to the enablers. If you have a bunch of yes people in your life and you just want a bunch of people that are gonna, yes queen, slay queen, yes girl, you to death and not actually tell you what needs to be said, that's a problem. Why don't you want to hear the truth? What about your ego is like stopping you from hearing the truth? And if you supposedly love and care about your friends, wouldn't you actually like value their input? And maybe in like very, very, very slim cases, there's just people that are jealous that you're happy and you finally found a partner and they genuinely, and your partner and your partner is genuinely a good person and they're just, they just don't want to see you happy and in a, in a relationship. That happens too. But most of the time, nobody's just going to try to like sabotage. Like we don't want that man. We're trying to tell you for your own good. We don't want him. The part of the video that Cecilia Regina was trying to hit home is that you cannot make your friends be basically emotional pack mules and like carry the weight of all your problems and then get mad when they tell you for your own good, please stop speaking to this person. And then you get offended and act like, you know, it's some personal attack on you, ego. They have a right to be exhausted because they you, you've told them in about 25 million different ways how terrible this person is and you want them to just act like it's all hunky dory. Of course not. They care about you. They don't want to see you hurt and complaining about the same thing if they know that they can try to at least help you and give you some advice but are you just using your friend as a dumping ground just to go right back to that same man you were just talking shit about is it two-sided are you guys both pouring into the relationship or is it this one person that's doing your emotional labor for you because you can't make a decision and either stay with this person and be quiet or leave like 
harsh, I know, but that's ultimately what it comes down to because you can't keep complaining about the same thing and then not change your circumstances if you can help it. Your friends will be there for you. They will want to help you. They will support in any way you can. And then that's not saying also, that's not saying you're not allowed to go to your friends with problems like yeah that's what a friendship is you're supposed to you know gossip and ooh, girl this is my tea what's going on with you like you're supposed to do that it's fun that's a part of womanhood that's a part of girlhood we love that like the catch-up sesh and stuff there comes a point where it becomes too toxic and it's like you're like low-key putting them in your relationship problems because they have to carry the weight and the baggage of that but i'm not even the one in the relationship so why am i feeling this so much so of course when the relationship is one-sided your friend is not going to want to pour into the relationship anymore why would they i mean what's in it for them what's in it for them if you're if they're the ones that are playing your therapist and just trying to console you throughout all of this but you still go backwards and you don't do what you say you're gonna do what is in it for them at this point for this relationship and i i can hear people in the comments now well this is the problem with capitalism and community and individualism western individuality and i can hear all of the buzzwords i know but i'm sorry to say this this is another harsh truth unconditional love is only for children okay unconditional love is reserved for children we all need to give children unconditional love we need to show the entire world like the collective as a whole people humanity as a whole unconditional love and naive people love unconditionally but people that are in their right mind have conditions to their love your standards are conditions and it's not just reserved for romantic relationships you have st you have conditions for friendships so yes love is absolutely conditional i will love you based on the conditions that you respect me you treat me kindly you make me feel safe like whatever your your specific thing is or even i will marry you so long as you make six figures and you have a an amex card or whatever i don't know what your situation is but you have conditions everybody has conditions and when you don't have conditions is when you find yourself in less than savory situations, okay? You find yourself with the loserlies because you don't have as many conditions, if any at all. You have to, your love has to be conditional, especially if you're a lover girl. If you can, if you are one of those girls that boasts and claims, I love so hard, I'm such a lover girl, you especially need to have conditional love because if you know and you understand how special and worthy that is to be loved by you you can't just give that out for free to everybody you have to be very 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 careful with who gets that and you have to vet accordingly because you know how special your love is so yes if you don't have any conditions if you have no standards you should consider decentering men welcome to the movement girl <laughs> And the reason why, you know, us as the friends on the other side of this dynamic, listening to all of these things you guys are putting up with, you can seriously get put in dangerous situations. And not just you, the one in the relationship, the friend. This, this whole decentering men goes beyond like, oh, get some hobbies, girl. If you're with a violent man and your friend is trying to come rescue you and get you out of the place, there's been many stories, real news stories, where people have unalived uh, friends that have tried to help the person in the relationship. Like this, this stuff is real. This is not a joke. Like this is not a game. And especially in an era where Roe v. Wade, they're literally playing with our human rights, our reproductive rights. This is not a time to be playing Russian roulette with your uterus. You need to take charge. You need to take control of your life this is serious but if you're not careful you can find yourself in bad dangerous situations and you can even get the people that you love by proxy hurt and even eliminated so like this is real life we, we don't just say this for fun like this is real men can legit ruin a, a woman's life top to bottom inside out forward to back like for real trap you with a baby ruin your credit mooch off you eat your food out of your fridge and sleep on your couch for forever and ever and ever even uh sabotage your higher education your job like it gets real out here there's some devious sick men out here that literally just enjoy making women suffer and like want to see you suffer and grovel at the hands of him like it's disgusting and it's weird and that's why we're so serious about this because it's it goes above oh you don't deserve love it's not about that like this there's real life that can happen this is real 
so be careful it goes beyond you if you're having sex the possibility of getting pregnant is there so just be careful because now you're bringing another generation of kids into it and now your kids have to see a, a an environment that's not healthy and perhaps go through the same cycle you went through and the cycle continues and then that's how generational curses happen like somebody has to take tart somebody has to take control somebody take off the rose colored goggles go to your local eye doctor get you some 4k ultra hd crystal clear 2020 frames and let's get locked and loaded ladies okay Whew. let's move on to final thoughts i just want to say that we on the decentering men side of things let's watch out and be cognizant of self-righteousness okay it may be enticing to want to help these people and tell them like no you shouldn't do this this is how you should live your life like you have to remember that you can't control other people like that is toxic you can't do that it's as much as you may want to as much as i may rant and rave on this thing like you can't actually change somebody's mind you know it's their life to live and of course you want to have you know you want everybody to have a nice safe comfortable life but sometimes people just have to go through things on their own pace and you can love them from a distance even though we as the outsiders can see all of the red flags right like we can see how bright red those things are and we're like oh my goodness what is going on here we're concerned i know but if she asks for your advice or if you want to just tell her leave it at like once twice at the absolute most people shouldn't be guilt tripping you because you don't want to listen to them like if it genuinely makes you uncomfortable you don't owe them your emotional labor all the time you really don't and the next point i want to make is that your kindness is not a weakness and i know we spent a lot of time in this decentering men conversation saying like well you were naive you were too kind stop thinking everything is you know butterfly and rainbows but there's nothing wrong with your kindness and your niceness and you shouldn't let this new knowledge like if you were one to pick me because you know we have to be honest with ourselves if you were one to pick me and you were now you know trying this new way of life don't let this jade you like continue being your nice kind self continue treating people with kindness and compassion and extend empathy to people who deserve it and who treat you with kindness if they're taking advantage of that kindness and they're using it for their own personal gain that is when you got to cut ties that's when the kindness stops and you got to be stern don't forget that you don't necessarily have to hyper focus on decentering men. Like I think we all go on to the from one side of the coin to the opposite extreme and then like we're hyper focusing on okay, don't dress for the male gaze, don't do this, don't do that. Like still live your life, be yourself. Just still live your life and be yourself. Like just don't live on other people's terms. Live on your own terms. You don't have to do things that are purposely going to go against what you think men would want, you know? Because that's when it's like, are you actually decentering men? Because I feel like you're, because it's not even decentering men at that point. You're still thinking and obsessing over men. You're just hating them. And lastly, I want you to remember that healthy love should and always needs to be reciprocated. If you're doing far more for that one person than they are, that is unhealthy. That is a problem. That is too one-sided. It is not equal. And remember that you have the strength to move on and do better. You deserve better. You are the star of your own universe. You are your own son and everything else just revolves around you. All right, you guys, and that is the end of this episode. I know this was a lot. This is probably my longest episode yet. I just had so much to say because this topic is so interesting. And you know what? We're probably, this is still a very brand new conversation. So we're probably gonna talk about this a lot more on this channel, on this podcast. And, you know, make sure you rate me five stars if you're listening to me on Spotify or Apple. I would truly appreciate it. And we need to get this message out there to other women because, you know, it's not about sides. It's not about... Uh, who's right and who's wrong ultimately we're all trying to come together and just do better for women as a whole and that's what it's all about it's not about you know chastising people and making people feel bad it's just about all of us all of us learning how to do better collectively right make sure to like this video and subscribe to the boudoir youtube channel and i will see you guys next week bye